Okay, um, hello everybody and thank you for joining us both online and in the audience here today for the third talk of our seventh annual photo book fair. Um, I'm really excited to introduce two um, fantastic speakers for us today. I'm going to be talk introducing Alexa Becker and Samet Durgan, who are both joining us from Germany, which is very exciting. Um, I hope everyone's enjoying the day so far, um, that you've been able to, if you're here in person, that you've managed to have a look around some of our stalls and take a look at some of the books. Um, if you're joining us online, don't forget we've got lots to browse on our website, including all of the books by self-published artists as well, which you can get if you go to impressions-gallery.com and navigate to our shop. So the book fair is always inspired by the exhibition that we're showing in the gallery. Um, so please do, again, if you're online, take a look at our virtual exhibition. If you're here in the gallery, take a look at the walls around you. Um, so at the moment we're showing In Which Language Do We Dream by a socially engaged photographer called Rich Wiles, along with Ruba al -Hindawi. The work is very much a collaboration, a co-authored project, looking at themes of um, kind of identity, displacement, and the idea of belonging and home as well. It follows the story of a Syrian family who have been displaced from their home and had to move to the UK. And the themes of this work, the this idea of kind of um, migration, of resettling, of finding your own kind of way in the world and building new relationships is what's inspired the talks that we've got today. So fitting in perfectly well with this, we've got Samet Durgan talking about his latest book, Come Get Your Honey. So Samet studied in Istanbul and Berlin. Um, this latest publication, which has just been produced by Kara Belag, explores the experiences of refugees and asylum seekers in Berlin, who identify as part of the LGBTQIA plus community. And the provocation behind Summit's work is what if photography is more about listening than seeing? And I think that's something that we really pick up on in the themes of the exhibition as well. And that's going to be a great thing to hear you both unpick. The work um, and the book has received international acclaim already. It's been covered in publications like Leica, like Camera Austria, Hook, GQ magazine, and exhibited at the Museum of Photography in Berlin as well. Um, so Samet's going to be talking about his work with Alex Becker. Alex is joining us for both talks this afternoon. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Alexa is from the German publishing house, Kara Bellag. She is um, a real expert in her field. Um, she's a commissioning ed editor who has a real eye for working with photographers who make timely and very relevant work. And she's an expert in her field. She, um, she kind of regularly offers advice and guidance and mentoring to photographers by taking part in international reviews, as well as um, doing freelance consultancy work as well. So I'm really interested in hearing what Alexa, what you picked up on um, in Summit's work and hearing more about the project itself. So I'll, I'll stop talking, I'll hand over to you. Um, you're going to talk for about 30 minutes and then we'll have about 10 minutes of questions. So for anybody who is joining us online, please do add your questions into the little Q&A box. Feel free to add those as we go along. You don't need to wait till the end and um, we'll pick up on these at the end of the talk. If you're here in the audience, please do be thinking about questions that you'd like to ask and then we can, we can get to those at the end as well. So now I'll hand over and um, I'll be back to join you in about half an hour. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela, for the nice words uh, introducing us. Um, hi, Summit. I'm really happy to be part of this and I guess you are too. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. And also uh, thank you for having me again, Alexa, after almost, uh, almost more than a year, right? That we talked for the first time. Right. So that, that's a good occasion. Absolutely. Uh, I, I remember with smile. Yes. Um, 
First of all, I want to say, I remember when I first saw Come Get Your Honey, you um, sent us um, a submission, like your project, and I saw the pictures and I was immediately taken by them because you really have a gift of um, portraying and showing a very complex theme, you know, the, the refugees in Berlin that, as Angela said, identifies LGBTQIA plus um, people, which is, you know, brings a lot of tension with it sometimes. And um, in your beautiful book, um, there's a, an amazing foreword by Amru Al-Khadi. And um, the first part of it is just so telling of what this work is about. And it's so deep, I would like to read it. It just takes one minute, 30 seconds, I checked. So it won't be too long, but it's incredibly precise and very telling, as I said. So if you don't mind, I would like to read these uh, sentences in order to give an introduction to the, to the world that you um, photographed. Absolutely. Uh, Amru is, uh, has done a great job. So I'm really happy that uh, we have the contribution and you picked up on that. Okay, wonderful. Okay, I'll start. Like the people in these photographs, I am myself a queer person living in a land far away from where I first started. Originally raised between various countries in the Middle East, I now live in London and identify as gay, non-binary, and Muslim. Inhabiting identities that are at their heart intersectional and straddling various social groups, I know what it's like to live in the in-between. A feeling, a hunger to be accepted, but a fight not to be assimilated of reveling in the potency of living on society's fringes, whilst also yearning for social visibility, of coming from a background that was intolerant of my queerness, yet entering a country that is dismissive of my racial identity and heritage. It is, in effect, like living forever on a tectonic fault line at constant risk of an earthquake a feeling as if you're flying on a plane that might never land. The tension is both chaotic and empowering, for whilst existing in a liminal monad between various social places is tiring, it is also the place with all the potential. I think that's very moving. Yes, and that's just the beginning of this, yeah. uh, of this long, long uh, sort of um, relatively long uh, Thing. I'm really, really lucky that uh, Amru agreed to uh, contribute to that. And I think the book also um, gave me the chance to make the whole experience richer. It was about getting people together on one place, on a common ground. And uh, I guess Amru's example is a great example that it amplified uh, the images. Yes. Um, also, oh, I wanted to share, um, I wanted to show some images of your book, but they don't seem to appear. Can you share probably? Because I can't show it right now, which is funny. You mean yeah. uh, going to my website? Exactly, because that's what I actually had open, and uh, but it doesn't seem to work right now for some reason. So, oh, I have it now. Oh, you have it now. Oh, I did. Um, yes, it was um, my. Um, I can share it now. It was just I had a problem with. Okay, uh, then go ahead, please. Because okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because. Um, it was kind of unexpected. Perfect. Okay. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the people you photographed yes. and, um, and why, and do you kind of belong to the scene you photographed or? Right. right. Um, the people, as uh, Angela mentioned, uh, the queer refugee and asylum seekers who happen to live in Berlin, and there is a difference between, maybe for the audience, uh, uh, there's a difference between refugee and asylum seekers. Asylum seekers come somewhere uh, or eat, eat, even be in a country and seek for asylum. So that's the first step of being a refugee, so to say. 
And once you are accepted as a refugee, then that's another level that you are in, that you have a paper, that you have a visa to stay. So these two things are, uh, I guess, it's worth the mention. And uh, yes, these people are queer, uh, transgender, non-binary, you know, all the letters of LGBTQIA+. Uh, and we all live in Berlin. And I would say, I mean, short answer, I'm partially a part of the community um, because we are all displaced and we live in another place than our homeland. And we are all queer. So that's the partial way I identify with the community, also connected with the community, like being very honest with that, uh, that's realizing our differences. But of course, there is a big difference that I'm not a refugee or I'm not an asylum seeker. I'm an immigrant in Germany who even got a German citizenship. So okay. there's a difference. Was that, uh, was that difficult for you, actually, to get a, a citizenship or...? It really depends, uh, it even, it even depends on occupation you have. I mean, uh, I work in the tech, uh, tech industry in, uh, in Berlin. So as long as you pay taxes, basically, you can apply for citizenship after some time. So it's been more than eight years for me. Uh, that's how I got it. And were you introduced by uh, a certain person to these, you know, people? And how, how were you, how did you get in touch? Basically? Yes, uh, there was one key. I mean, there are several key people who were uh, extremely generous with me, who were also thought leaders, opinion leaders in the community. But the first person is uh, Prince Emra, uh, who also interviewed me for the book, uh, who asked me questions. So sort of a flip interview. And uh, she and he, so the pronouns are she and he, um, she was the person that I got in touch with for the first time. And uh, she's a belly dancer, a beauty and wellness student, sort of larger than life figure uh, that I'm lucky to know and call my friend. And the more we, the time we spent together with, the more opportunities, the more people uh, kind of came along um, she's also uh, the founder of a collective called Queerback, uh, which provides and champions, uh, provides space and champions uh, queer refugee and asylum seeker performance artists, like singers or drag artists, um, who have, who might have hard time to find a stage to perform when they first arrive. So Prince Emra kind of does that for them too. So it was an organic sort of connection me connecting with Prince Semra, then connecting with the collective and the whole community. I mean, community meaning people knowing each other, basically. Yeah, sounds awesome. It sounds like a very organic uh, development and kind Absolutely. of nice how it nicely spread. Do you do you see uh, do you see my screen right now? Actually. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. I'm because I can't see it, so I I wonder. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Um, so, yeah, as I said, I was really taken by, you know, the warmth of, of the portraits you took, but also of the more metaphorical um, images, like um, we're almost getting there. I'm looking for a specific one. Yeah, this, <clears throat> this specific image really is very touching because, you know, you see the shade of the people in, in the spray of water. And I think it talks very much about, you know, of visibility versus invisibility and how these people, and I don't mean to sound negative by saying these people, of course, um, are moving around in, in society, in our society, right? Um, is it a little bit like that? I mean, uh, I guess like everybody who look at this picture kind of got what they, what they took and that's the beauty of images, you know, I cannot force a meaning to it. Okay. Uh, but the only thing I can do is that I feel right that uh, that's the that's the picture that could fit to the feeling or the the you know theme in my mind. Um, but this is a figurative image, so to say. Um, there are more city images that uh, that you already showed, but also in the book as well. That um, that I think this book is about 
people, but also people who live in a certain city. And that's why there, for me, it was really important to observe the city, important to uh, collaborate with people in the city and make these images that are from the city um, as well. Um, and then, uh, an image pair that particularly speaks to me is like, is this, and in the book, um, this <clears throat> torso, which is very, you know, kind of warm and welcoming and has this amazing red color and so soft and, you know, is placed next to this <clears throat> building. And this is what I associate a lot of times with Berlin too. It's like, a, it's a big city, it's a tough city. Um, you know, it's not charming all the time. Um, the weather is not super nice every time, um, like most of the year. Um, so how do you feel, um, what, what's life there uh, from your perspective and also from the, from the refugees perspective? It's not, I, I imagine it must be tough a lot of the time also, is it? Or maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's really interesting how we look at these two images and uh, how many different meanings can, uh, can, can this mean to someone. Uh, for me, for instance, when I see, I remember you like this image, by the way. Yeah. And when we talked, I remember this. Mm -hmm. uh, when I see these images next to each other, I, I think that this person that I know, uh, Suryani, is like a rock, you know? So that was like for me, like the, 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 uh, the place that this image came. So if you look at this, like next to each other, which is on the book as well, uh, that feels like uh, she's a rock to me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, but it's fair that, um, you know, everybody's life is different in Berlin. Some love it, some, I mean, all of us realize that it's not a perfect city. But uh, the comments, the many comments that I heard from people that it's definitely better than where we came from in that sense, um, in terms of uh, gender expression, um, you know, feeling comfortable with your gender. But obviously it has its also unique challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, yeah. Um, but uh, I think in general, I mean, Berlin has this very long tradition of being super open right. to, you know, you can be who you want to be there. Um, and that's, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, so um, there's a lot of, yeah, openness and tolerance, I guess, or people don't even care, you know, if you walk around and wearing your socks in strange places or whatever, you know, you can think of. So, um, yeah, it's, it's certainly a specific, it's a very special city. I want so, to build on this one. Um, if, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, obviously, like, for instance, uh, as you said, somebody wouldn't be openly harassed, let's say, if you're walking in the street. But I would say the freedom of Berlin or the beauty of Berlin comes from the fact that there are pockets of freedom that everybody can connect to. So if you belong to somewhere or if you want to belong to somewhere, you, you go and find those people. So that kind of diversity uh, that kind of what it can offer to you is, I think, uh, is the most important thing that Berlin uh, offers to, let's say, uh, LGBTQIA plus people. Not that it's really, really safe, not that mm -hmm. everybody feels super safe in the streets or at night, but it's more like we know that we are not alone, we are together if we want to. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. So when you came to Berlin, was it clear to you that, that you would focus on, you know, the subject matter you did, um, like gender? Uh, was that clear to you? Was that obvious or, you know? Um, I mean, when you look at the book from a fair distance, yes, I can say that gender is the main topic. But when I think about like how, how these images came together, uh, when I think about why I did these images, Obviously, there is this part of me, you know, sort of setting myself free from, uh, from, from the shame that I had or, you know, from the secrets that I had to keep. Uh, there is also this aspect of connecting with people, connect, like finding people whom I adore, I aspire, I, um, I love. So there is so much about connection in this book as much as, let's say, uh, about gender or about displacement. Right. And um, what I find interesting as well and amazing, actually, is that, you know, you weren't um, you had a life before photography. Right. I mean, you're uh, still pretty young, but you 
you know, started an IT, uh, IT, um, entirely different uh, career. And then you became a photographer and you became successful really quickly. I mean, you have this book, you have a, um, an exhibition um, at the Museum for Photography in Berlin, which is not like where you start basically usually. So um, this is all amazing. How, how, what brought you to photography? Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question. And sometimes I try to also answer this uh, to myself, but I think there is this part of me which always belonged to art. So that was the, you know, taking pictures of my sister, you know, consciously, uh, like setting up uh, stages or making my friends look good or, you know, taking pictures that they like. And, uh, but there was also this aspect of, you know, I was making paintings in the high school when people were having lunch breaks or I was taking um, uh, all available uh, art classes in my liberal university in Istanbul while I'm, uh, I'm studying in uh, uh, business, while I'm, I'm enrolled in business. So there's always this art uh, that was part of me, so to say. Um, and I never really thought that this could be something that I would do professionally. I think it occurred to me after a couple of years of living uh, in, in the business life and still missing the depth maybe the uh, the emotions the complexity um the freedom of uh, of life that i was searching for so uh, i would say uh, photography or art was always with me but it kind of like sprouted uh, I, you mentioned about this uh, you know this let's say uh, swift success with book thanks to you talking to you uh, also the museum i'm i'm seeing these like little leaves of a uh, small sprout so there's so much rooting uh, uh, you know on uh, on the soil and then now i'm an up and coming emerging artist uh, who loves to produce and who loves to share with people who wants to listen or who wants to uh, talk about it yeah, maybe like all these developments have a long, long history in your life. But what we see is just the thing above the earth. And it's like, oh, you know, <clears throat> it came out and then boom, 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 you know, <laughs> everything started to happen uh, very quickly. But of course, that's just um, one part of the story because, you know, you've been around for a longer time and, and you loved uh, the arts and, and, and photography before, you know, entering the scene, the photography scene, actually. Was there something like an artist or, or different sources that informed your aesthetic? Because I feel you have a very consistent uh, way of taking pictures and, you know, the, you know, kind of the atmosphere that we see in the series. Is there like a source, would you call it? Um, okay, I will try to keep this a simple answer because <laughs> every time uh, I talk about or think about my inspirations, I get lost. Um, but um, for instance, I am uh, like I'm feeding my creativity from different uh, areas of uh, art forms. So the book's name, uh, Come Get Your Honey, is a, a line from a song from Robin, who is a singer and songwriter. And then um, there is Andrea Akiman, who is the author of Call Me By Your Name, who has this positivity in it. Um, then there is uh, Jeff Koons, there is Marina Abramovich, there is Wolfgang mm -hmm. Hilmans, there is um, Mitch Epstein, and countless and countless of uh, beauty and fashion photographers, social uh, portrait photographers. Um, so I'm, I'm really like sort of swimming in inspiration, so to say, and getting a bit of like best of their bits. Um, but obviously visual consistency is something that I personally am really interested in. Somehow I'm obsessed with that consistency and it, like consistency in, in my life and it surfaces on my images too. So um, it's, it's great that you picked up uh, on that as well. Yes, absolutely. And um, I also wondered, <clears throat> what was the, the bookmaking process for you? Because that's, again, entering <clears throat> something that is completely unknown and that brings a lot of, you know, <sighs> details with it, like technical details and, and planning and, and, and 
paper choices and whatnot. So how, how is the bookmaking process for you? I would say <laughs> it's good that I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> before I started. Okay. Uh, I mean, that doesn't mean that I won't make a book. I love making, uh, making books. Now I do. Uh, <laughs> but I totally, as a beginner, underestimated how complex and yeah. how, how, uh, how much effort and thought uh, and also people uh, it mm -hmm. takes to make a book. And I'm really glad that I did that. And I'm really glad that uh, we, we talked in the right time, maybe before I discover how, uh, how complex this thing is. Okay. Uh, so I jumped on it and you know, grew into it. So thank you for making it sound easy for me and being so supportive to me from the beginning. Um, um, but yes, it, it was a long and exciting process to me. And Kaira Felak, you know, the, the team was extremely helpful and open to my all suggestions, even if I'm doing this for the first time. So they, they were very open-minded and supportive to me. So was there something particularly uh, fascinating for you or, or how was the feeling when you like held this book in your hands or what does this book mean to you? Because it means a lot of different things to different people and some see it as a stepping stone in their career. Some are just super in love with the book as an object itself and they can't stop making books because they say that's basically what I live for. So yeah. what, what does this book signify in your realm and from your point of view? To me, uh, I think like when I was making the images, uh, I realized that there was a deeper story I wanted to tell. There, there was a little universe I wanted to create. So that required an intro and outro. Uh, so intro from Amru El Kadi, outro from Mariana Aguirre, uh, uh, a creator, a friend of mine. Um, and then the interview with Prince Emra, who is asking me the questions. Um, and then there, there are even QR codes, which you can check the sound and video. I'm not going to tease too much, maybe. Uh, <laughs> or even go to a website and check the backside of some of the images. So there are many, many elements that I thought that would just create a little universe. So this book is as much, let's say, um, a live object as it could be, um, an experience for, for, for a viewer for myself and for my uh, for the people who are in the picture first. Yeah, I think I mean I think it's amazing what you can do now with you know using uh, augmented reality or QR codes or whatever like um, and enhance uh, a very traditional um, you know object like a book. But to me also a book is like a visit to a, a mini visit to a museum. It it creates a certain atmosphere if you open a book. You take your time. You usually you have a little bit of free time or peace of mind and then you can digest all the, also the um you know the co its contents its message you know and, and let it sink in and um so for me it's really beautiful because you can also you can pick it up you can transfer it you don't need electricity you don't need to get there it's with you um so a book to me is um really a miracle like between two you know like you know two cardboard um sheets of cardboard so um i absolutely yeah. agree with you like uh, I, there, there was something that i read if you want to change someone's mind give a book okay uh, so like that works actually like um like if you want to learn something at your pace i think book is a, a great way to do it and uh definitely coming back to like feeling of coming back to whenever you want to you know right it doesn't happen with um that doesn't happen with uh, you know this endless social media feeds or right. even, uh, even movies um i think there is a beauty of a uh, beauty of the books that you can just really literally keep coming back to the your favorite image or i don't know to get inspired so uh there's so much more uh, in it than just uh, yeah two cardboards and some papers in it yes right and and would you think okay you want to expand this specific body of work some more and maybe do a follow-up book or is this this topic is it done for you now how do you feel um i mean i'm lucky to call some of the people in the book are my friends so we still see each other and there are pictures uh, coming from uh, from these you know meetings as well i always take my camera with me 
Um, but I mean, this this book is a personal book to me. Uh, it is <laughs> even my coming out to my bigger family that uh, might have even uh, have not seen the book yet, <laughs> um, and many more things. But um, I am very connected to what I'm doing uh, in terms of uh, images. So this is the thing that I want to explore further. Like what is draw, uh, drawing my attention? What is, uh, what is making me think? What is making me dream? Um, so I think there won't be a come get your honey too, but there will for sure be images of the people uh, who are from the community who is maybe Prince Emra. Uh, that will surface in uh, another uh, way. Right, right. And um, Angela said uh, at the beginning that this was much about, um, you know, listening than just taking pictures. Can you refer to the, or can you explain this a little bit more? Angela, do we still have time to do that or? Um, yeah, I think so. We, we've, I was just having a look and I don't think we've got too many questions in the chat. But um, so if you just want to finish that line of thought and then we got questions here, show of hands. I could certainly ask a couple, but um, if you just want to wrap up where you were there. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, so you, you asked about the, uh, what if photography uh, about listening. Right. Uh, the, 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 the way I see is that today's photography Let's say even, let's, let's put even a number, 98% of the photography for me is about visuals. So how's and what's, uh, like the visual accuracy, um, you know, metaphors and depths or, um, or the charge of an image. So we are always looking at the surface. We are consuming it sort of, uh, looking at it, but blindly in a way. Um, but there is also this aspect of, uh, there are also other aspects than what and how, and I would call them who, uh, who and why. Mm -hmm. Like who is making the images? We, we already see this, uh, you know, uh, is there a connection between the uh, photographer's uh, ethnicity or culture to the subject or uh, what's the socioeconomic status of an artist, etc. So we, we are already asking these who questions a lot. And to me, there is one more step and that is why. So. With, with the given chances, opportunities, taking the time, taking the, like being curious about a subject. Uh, why do I take these images? Like whose gaze am I serving with those images? Um, and whose gaze am I serving with these images? And is there, is there an additional interpretation of uh, of the subject that I'm dealing with, or am I just beautifying it in a way and it just keeps saying the same thing and no, it just adds nothing to my, you know, uh, to my to my knowledge. So this kind of uh, what if photography is listening is about everything else but seeing it. Okay, like truly absorbing the background of why, uh, you know, these pictures were taken and what they want to actually express. Okay, I see, I get it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much um, for sharing with us. I'm just going to open up again to the floor here to see if we've got any questions. Anybody? Yes, please. Uh, shy questions, you know, even maybe they think it's a silly question. I'm, I'm very open. Well, I, I will ask. Um, so I, and thank you again for elaborating on that idea of photography as listening rather than seeing. And I just wondered how, um, with the portraits in your work, how, how you worked with the people who you're making work with and about, and was that, would you see that as kind of a collaborative process? Some of the images are quite intimate and personal. And um, yeah, I just wondered to what extent did you discuss those, those images with, with the people you worked with? Um, I mean, that was definitely not a, a one way of doing things. So I wouldn't say all pictures are collaborative. I wouldn't say all pictures of my, uh, are my ideas or, you know, um, there's a mix of that. But what, what, is, what is true is that everybody's well informed about what I was trying to do. 
one person who visited me after the book said, there was no other way that I won't say yes to you because you were so kind and direct to me about what you wanted to do. And I, I thought, of course, I will help my family. So she was also telling me that uh, she saw me as a family. So there, there was this really honest uh, interaction between us. And I didn't go to the places to take pictures. I met people first and, you know, had relationships. It doesn't mean that, you know, I'm hiding my camera, but it's more like, it was more like waiting for a moment that drew both of our attentions. But there are also images um, that were maybe even taking one step further. For instance, <laughs> the, uh, if you go to my website, the opening page is me in a belly dance costume. And uh, that's a picture uh, that, uh, that that's a costume that I took from Prince Emra, who interviewed, interviewed me. And um, that was such an organic moment at that night that I wanted to dress up like Emra and wanted to have a great picture in that. Um, so there are also these, like, let's say, over collaborative images that has even deeper meaning for me. And I hope that they are somehow visually uh, tra transmitting to the viewer as well. Yeah, I, th I think that relationship really comes through. Yeah. Um, can I just have a time check? Sorry. 28 minutes. Oh, okay, so I think I think we're about to ready to wrap up there, really. So um, I just want to say a big thank you um, to Summit for sharing your work, for being so generous. Um, the, the, I jotted down so many words there about, and a lot of them were very positive words about freedom and connection and love, opportunity, potential, and and these words are very inspiring and it's just, yeah, fantastic to see that kind of vibrancy and the connections that your work has facilitated, I suppose, and enabled. Um, and thank you so much to Alexa as well for um, sharing your expertise and um, talking about the process of how you've worked with Summer as well. Um, so yes, thank you so much for taking part in our book fair and we hope to keep in touch with you. We don't have copies of the book available um, here at the gallery, but they are available online. So Alexa, um, they're available through the Caravella website. That's right. Yeah. Yes, true. Mm -hmm. So we urge everybody to go there now <laughs> and um, get your hands on a copy of the book while while it's still available. Get your honey. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thank you so much for, uh, for having us. Uh, really pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you to everyone for joining us online and for Karen for doing the technology. <laughs> thank you everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.